Hello and welcome to the live stream, hopefully. Uh, let's just have a quick check, see if uh, apparently there are three, no wait, two viewers. Um, if you can hear me, please just quickly pop a comment in and say you can. Hopefully this is all going well. I'll just uh, keep talking for the time being while we just wait to check that. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of seconds. Yep, that sounds right. So, um, I'm first of all going to apologise for this uh, webcam quality right here. Um, this is primarily because, hang on, let me find it. Um, my good camera is here, hello, um, on looking down at the table and I apologise for the mess. Hang on a second. You, uh, you would have thought, maybe, possibly, hang on. You would have thought, maybe, possibly, seeing as I actually planned when I was going to go live on this, I would have uh, had that all sorted, ready to go. Uh, but alas, no, um, I'm an idiot and rushed everything and rushed dinner. So, uh, yeah, that was that. Um, yo, 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 says AATV. Hello, welcome to the stream. Uh, hopefully this goes somewhat well and... Uh, is uh, almost uh, almost as good as your stuff. Um, now I'll move the mic closer. Oh, can I turn it up anymore? Uh, come on, let me put some more info. Let's give it 3 dB. How's that? Uh, just turn the mic up. Uh, I'm gonna have to wait another 20 seconds for that. Uh, how's that sounding to you? Hopefully that's all right. Um, so yeah, a bit of a bit of a trial this one. Uh, first time live streaming ever, um, other than well, me running a live stream as opposed to appearing on a live stream, um, and first time really driving OBS to do anything other than stream this camera. Sorry, uh, this camera to uh, to uh, Skype. So hopefully this all goes well. Uh, how's that mic volume sounding? Uh, it's still looking a bit low, isn't it? Uh, give me a second. Yeah, let's give it some more oomph. Let's go 10 dB. Uh, how's that? That should be better. Right. Ooh. Ooh, was that a... Yeah, E. Too much. Uh, that looks better now, and hopefully I'm not playing it back to myself. Right, that should hopefully. Hopefully, should be all right. Uh, why are you playing it back? Ah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, hopefully that's fixed. Sorry, sorry. Um, I don't know why it just started playing out my speakers. <laughs> Which is just going to loop back. Anyway, what we're here for today is to look at uh, how I do my kind of CAD through to 3D printing uh, from an idea. And, uh, well... I've had a suggestion from uh, from uh, from AATV, and I believe currently one of my only viewers uh, about making. Oh, let's see if I can do this right. Uh, yep, making uh, an NVG mount patch, effectively. So um, hopefully, I am showing the right thing. Yeah, I am. That's good. Uh, so we're looking at making uh, this patch here, which is from what the 2000 AD soldier loadout um, and I believe you're kind of looking at building up a kit so uh, let's uh, let's try and make that and hopefully it shouldn't be too hard um, so everything I'm going to be using today in terms of software is actually free so let's have a little walk through that at the moment so uh, so the software I use for design is something called uh, Fusion 360 uh, so hopefully Ooh. Fusion 360, um, 
it's a free bit of software for hobbyists and for industry with less than I think 10 employees and under 10 no 100k turnover which is quite nice um, and it is easy enough to download so I'll jump back over to my Chrome tab uh, so uh, so here we've got our lovely Chrome tab here um, and you can just go to Fusion 360, in fact just type in Fusion 360 for hobbyists and uh, pretty much top link that comes up this is the software I use um, and it's actually a really impressive bit of kit because not only does it do 3D modelling uh, and I think you can do sort of some kind of stress tests and uh, um, analysis on it, it also uh, they've recently introduced um, electronic design so PCB design and schematic design which is which is really really cool in fact oddly they bought out the company that used to do the PCB software that I used at uni which was uh, something called Eagle and have basically just taken Eagle and smushed it into Fusion 360 um, so Fusion 360 is really kind of just kind of this all-encompassing CAD tool now which which for me is really really good uh, let's just check excellent so right let's let's crack on so uh, so we've got fusion 360 which is what the CAD tool and CAD stands for computer aided design uh, and this is what we'll use to draw up our model um, and I don't know if I'm going to go all the way through to actually printing it today but I'll walk through the stages of printing and for printing we use a bit of software called Cura so so here I've just loaded up this is a, a replacement body pin for an L85 because I appear to lose mine all the time for some reason um, and Cura is what we call a slicer. So effectively, it takes the 3D model that we've got. Uh, do I have a 3D print to hand? It's kind of a bad one, but it takes your 3D model you've got and slices it into the layers that the 3D printer is going to print. You can think of it that way. What it really does is take the model and converts it into something called G code, which is um, machine control code to control all the motors on the 3D printer to both move the head around, raise it up and push it down and to push the filament through. Um, and then you take that code, chuck it on your 3D printer and away it goes printing out your uh, your model. So to begin with, let's bring up Fusion again. Oh, where is it? Fusion. There we go. So this, this is... Uh, these, this is, um, in fact, one of my rail cover pieces, which I was giving away recently. Um, and I'm still giving it away if, if anyone wants to uh, wants to have a look at that. Or wants to get one, in fact. Um, but we want to start a new design. So let's go to new design. We are good to go. Now, I'm going to drop over to my table cam. And I think you might lose my face for a bit. There we go. Oh, that's so much better. And here we have uh, my helmet with, in fact, a 3D printed GoPro NVG mount on it. Uh, yeah, it was printed in orange and I've kind of spray painted it green. It's not bad, actually. It's lasted a good few number of years without fading. Um, so no, this isn't an official helmet. This is uh, probably an FMA clone. But this is the thing we're going to be dealing with. The... Uh, the um, the MVG mount, which is what we're going to mount this design into. So, how are we going to do that? I uh, I have here a set of calipers, which I find indispensable at the moment. <laughs> oh, rapid rapid prototyping departments are the way forwards with the. Uh, way forward with any form of design industry um so where i work at the moment is uh primarily well i guess the best term is old farts <laughs> uh so most most of the uh, people at my work are are reaching the kind of end of their working career um and hence why they're hiring in lots of grads which i am one of um they didn't believe in in rapid prototyping or their, their kind of style was get it done once get it done right um which for the most part is a good thing to do but it can get expensive if you mess things up and so we've been pushing quite a lot for rapid prototyping at work and we've got it we've got some 3d printers we've got laser cutters and uh, 
it makes things a whole lot easier to just go and trial and test and not have to wait a couple of days for it to go out and then come back, uh, which is quite nice. So for those of you who don't know, calipers are, are used for fine measurement of, <laughs> oh really? And the battery's dead on this one. Oh well, we'll use it manually. So yes, calipers are used for fine measurements of uh, bits and pieces, effectively. They're, they're a calibrated ruler. Oh, let's get that cover back on properly. Of course, everything, <laughs> everything's been going wrong today and um, I thought this option would be different, but apparently not. So, effectively, you uh, can use it to accurately measure distances both internally with your internal prongs and, for instance, externally with your external prongs there. And normally you get the measurement nice and clear up on the screen, but mine's out of battery, so uh, so we're going to be doing it manually. And yes, prototype early, prototype often. Um, I have boxes and boxes of initial prototypes and iterations of designs that I've worked on. Here's a whole stash of different iterations of things. Let's move the helmet out of the way. Going through different types of camera mounts, uh, mounted plates, double stacks. Originally it was two separate pieces, so the the scope cam part mount on top and then the, the uh, selfie camera mount on the bottom and then we moved over to a single double stack one like this uh, and all sorts of iterations but yes with 3D printing and, and CAD design like this it can very much be prototype early and prototype a lot <laughs> because you're getting what is effectively same day turnaround if not quicker on anything you do, so you you can do that iteration post process a lot faster. Uh, anyway, that's a bit of a tangent. Um, so yeah, a set of calipers. If you don't have calipers, you can use a ruler, um, but just make sure you measure the right parts effectively. So the aim of the game today is to make a little plate that fits into the MVG mount, uh, and then we'll have our. Uh, our lovely little uh, uh, a lovely kind of oh, not that logo where is it oh did I close it <laughs> again yeah well uh, oh no I moved it there um our lovely little 2080 soldier bad uh, logo so might as well crack on Annoyingly, I can't seem to find the specs for the MVG mount online. So one of the things I do whenever I'm making something that goes onto like Picatinny or uh, maybe even onto the Mitch side rails there is I'll look for the specs online because, for instance, um, Picatinny is a kind of open source spec because it's a NATO spec. So the measurements for those are, are actually online and pretty easy to find, although they're normally in imperial measurements because of the US, um, <laughs> which is is not really that much of a bother but I prefer my things being in uh, in metric. So anyway, uh let's crack on. So really this is effectively a rectangle that we're gonna make. That's such a hard shape to make. And it's looking like it is a 41 mil wide by Fifty-two mil tool. Just to confirm, we can probably go to this one and measure that. So this is doing the external measurement as opposed to the internal measurement. That should give us the same results. Forty-one wide by oh, fifty-one tool. Interesting. Let's have a look. And that does fit snug. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So, the difference there is there is a chamfer. There's a bit of a chamfer on this edge here, so I measured externally, whereas I should have measured down here, so I'm sure if I remeasure that now. Uh, 
Yeah, 51. So, let's jump on over into Fusion 360 and talk about that. Okay. So we've got this new design here and I would just hide that to give us a bit more space. So we're going to uh, work effectively on a 2D design and then pull it up into a 3D design. So we're going to create a, a new drawing plane, which we have here. We're going to go and grab a rectangle. Now normally Fusion auto defines from corner to corner, um, but I prefer having my design centered so I'm going to click over here on the center rectangle. I can drag, drag it out and I can see that one number is highlighted already so that's 50 and we're going to change that to 51 and we're going to change that one to 41 and that's mil. And there we go, there is our, our starting point, that is our base rectangle. Um, then I grab the thing I'm going to be measuring again and try and figure out depth. Oop, that, I forgot to turn notifications off. Give me a second. All right, hopefully people uh, won't keep bugging me. So we're going to look at this sort of depth here. And again, it's chamfered, but I'm going to take from the edge of those chamfers. So uh, the other thing you can use a caliper for is at the end, it comes out and you can use that to measure the depth of something. So that's what I'm going to do here. Put that on there, push that down. That's five mil. So we'll make a five mil deep plate. Let's jump back into Fusion. So I've used the shortcut key E for extrude, but we can do the same thing here. Just come up here and click on this tool, that's extrude. And it's selected the square that we've made, but we can just click away or click on whatever we want to extrude. And then it's highlighted the number again, so I can just type five for five mil and uh, enter that and pull it up. And there we go. There is a lovely rectangle, which is the basis of where we're going to start modeling. Um, so that's that's kind of the initial plate, um, and now we need to make the two locking tabs, of which one is going to go into the top. Ooh. So one of them is going to go into the top here. Uh, and I'm apologising. I apologise. This doesn't seem to want to focus. Maybe if I flip it over, get that one out of the way. So yeah, one wants to go into this recess up here, um, and one will be sprung loaded somehow and go into this recess down here. So let's just worry about that top one for the time being. So this one's going to be a bit of a tricky uh, part to figure out. Uh, that looks about right in terms of height. It's four mil. So, let's add a 4 mil tab onto that, and we can just confirm again we've got our 3D printed one that, that I found online. So there's uh, there are several sites that have freely distributed models for 3D printing. Um, I'm just trying to remember what, what it is. Oh, I should have looked this up before starting. <laughs> um, Thingiverse, that's it, Thingiverse. So I went on Thingiverse and, and found this model a couple of years ago and printed it. Um, but we're going to reverse engineer off of this. Uh, it's, my motto is if the work's already been done, don't do it again. And that's a uh, that's saying 3 mil for that locking tab, which makes sense. 3 mil. Look at that. Oh right, yeah. So part of the issue is that this is curved there. So really we're gonna be trying to look to get those two edges and you can kind of see where it's worn down against the uh, part for a while. So yeah, three mil across the width and we can find the width of our that quite easily. Which is 31. So if we make a 30, no wide tab, and I'm assuming this is going to be a lot smaller. I'm assuming this is going to be like 
22 mil tab. Okay, well, <coughs> if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. That's what I guess we'll do then. So, from the bottom, we'll switch back to Fusion. So, we are going to decide that this part is our top. So, I'm going to click on it and create a new sketch. And we're going to make it 3 mil tall and we're going to make it 22 mil wide. So, I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to turn it to construction mode. So, it's not a solid line, it's just a reference measurement. And we're going to move that and make that 1.5 mil tall, so one and a half mil tall, because so that will give us the centre of a three mil rectangle. Again, we'll go to our centre rectangle design, we can turn construction off, and we're going to make it three mil tall and 22 mil wide. And that will be our locking tab. And one of the things I didn't measure was how far it needs to be extruded. So, uh, do that. And we're going to extrude out that's looking like two and a half mil. Extrude out by two and a half mil. So again, we've opened up our extrusion. I've used the shortcut E uh, that you can click up here, and we're going to extrude. I'm going to make sure this says join, so it's all part of one body. That's important. I'm going to extrude by 2.5 mil, and uh, oh, I have done that all on the wrong screen. I apologise for that, and we'll um, just jump back. So we've got our model here. We've got our, our sketch that we've just drawn. I'm going to select it. We're going to go to solid, and we're going to go extrude. And we're going to extrude by two and a half mil, and make sure that the operation is join because we want one body, not several bodies. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't like to print. So make sure it's all one body. There we go. And then hopefully, there we go. There's our nice little tab sticking out, ready to go. Um, do feel free to drop questions in the comments, guys. I'm more than happy to answer any, any questions you have. Um, also, is the audio still good? Is the video still good? Are you all still following what's going on? Just want to check that. And that's that's the plate that we're going to make. So if I wanted to, I could probably print this out now and then test that it fits. But uh, that'd be kind of boring to sit here and wait for 10 minutes while that prints out. So we'll crack on and uh, hopefully that will all work. <laughs> hopefully. Um, right, okay. So where does that put us in terms of the design? If I jump back over. Uh, well, that brings us kind of flush with that, which is what we want, and then maybe I'll leave the locking. Nah. No, let's do let's do the locking tab now. So the way this design works is you've got two uh, captured. Let's see if I can get a bit better lighting on that. You've got two captured springs and a separate part which is held in place by a screw there and it just springs back and forth and runs quite happily runs quite happily back and forth uh, and that's quite a nice design I, nothing wrong with that got a nice little, uh, little uh, finger catch there to help pull it in when it's uh, mounted on the helmet uh, I don't know if I uh, if I like that design, or if I want to do that design, or go for something slightly different. And I'm thinking I can probably design a 3D printed spring, so it's all one piece. Um, and I know, I know uh, other people have designed designed uh, stuff with uh, um, with 3D printed springs. So I think Brain Exploders GoPro mount uses a 3D printed spring. So well, let's let's try and 3D print the spring. Ah, okay. Is fusion fusion a parametric like solid works with a feature tree? Uh, oh, that is a good question. I don't think it is. I think it's more a uh, timeline, so I can revert back through my timeline. Um, oh, 
how so it, so you have a timeline along along the bottom that you can step back through uh, your design. So uh, I think a good example of that would be if I um, jump into the A3 project. Uh, this is the rail I've been working on. Also, I'm, I'm sure if there are any actual <laughs> uh, uh, d professional designers who work with Fusion watching, they're going to start screaming at all the yellow boxes on here because this was a bit of a hodgepodge in terms of design work. And yeah, these red boxes ignore those. Those those are normally bad, but um, yeah. So. Uh, Oh no, shift, yes. So here's the A3 rail I've been working on, um, or the EK3 rail as we're calling it, just to make sure HK don't come down on us. <laughs> um, and then you can see I can revert all the way back through it to. Oh, what's going on there? Normally it doesn't mind doing that. Let's see if I can just go straight back to the first extrusion. Oh, my computer's really struggling. Who'd have thought that running uh, 3D design software and a stream with several sources might cause a computer to, to run a bit fast? Um, let's just see if that loads up anytime soon. Nope. Okay, I'm going to close that and not save that. Uh, maybe if I go to the original. So yeah, the the, um, the A3 rail went through a couple of different uh, iterations, and so um, so originally it started out with uh, with uh, bigger mounting holes on the side because I thought they were key mod, and no, it turns out they're actually H key, which is not an open spec. So I had to. Make that one up as it goes along. So you can see there's some much bigger keyholes there. But yes, in this timeline we can we can scrub back and, and see what it looks like without features. So so a lot of the stuff I just removed there are um, kind of uh, fillets and kind of smoothers and rounding the corners off and such. You can see I've... Uh, oh, there's a good one. See the kind of serrations here? They were, they were patterned out, so I can remove that first pattern. Uh, that mirroring there is mirroring it onto the other side. Ooh, I have moved something. Uh, and then we can probably run all the way back uh, to... The first extrusion. Oh, it's not like I'm going that far back. Does it not like any of the warnings? <laughs> ah! Okay, uh, what's going on there? Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, that's as far as we're going to go. But yeah, it's, it's a timeline you can scrub along. And, ah, thank you, Tom. Or if you sent me... Ah oh, yes, 3D printer spring. Oh, that's an interesting design. Is that a separate piece? Oh, it does look like a separate piece. Oh, intriguing. I think we can probably try and do a one-piece one. I'd be cool if we could do it as all one print for this. So, uh, so that's what we'll try and do, and hopefully I can do that snaky spring design. And uh, anyway, I'm going to close that and get back to the design we're working on. So we've got our locking tab, and this is all very rough at the moment. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, you can use this cube up here to navigate around to all your different views. So we can come around and look at the back. Um, and what I'm going to do is kind of mesh the two ideas together. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to do is quickly bring up that spring photo that Tom sent through. Hopefully I can open the full screen. 
Oh, computer's struggling. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So I can do that. And that. So that's the spring spring design. Um, although that looks like a two piece to me. So you've got your main support structure, and then this spring is secondary. Um, but I think there's probably a way of designing that so it's all integrated nicely. And let's give it a go. Um, so I am going to jump back to Fusion. I'm going to close Facebook so it doesn't annoy us anymore. Um, and we're going to create a new sketch on that end. And let's have a look at the current support we've got. So that'll be table cam transition. Oh. So they are using a latch width of. Well, it's really annoying that the battery's dead on this. 12 and a half and a latch depth. Oh, no, oh, two and a half. So two and a half wide, two and a half deep. Wait, no. I am talking at my back. Twelve and a half wide and two and a half deep. And how far up from the base is it? Two and a half. So two and a two and a half tall, twelve and a half wide by two and a half deep, so What I'm going to do is, so it's going to be kind of interesting, we're going to go out by uh, 6.25 and then we're going to go up at 45 degrees and again look you can you can set your distances, you can also set your angles. So if I'm, I'm going to go up by 45, so add that to 90, um, 135, 135. Oh, good golly, I apparently am no longer on the chat, so I can't see if you guys are spamming me with lots of messages. Uh, hang on, that's why I have extra devices around me. Do -do -do. Can I see my own live stream? Oh, I can. Excellent. Let's uh, mute that before I cause issues to myself. Nope, you haven't sent me anything. I, I'm heartbroken. Uh, uh, let's jump over. I realised I was doing all of that without being on Fusion 360 again, because I'm a mug. Um, so, I will start again. So, I've opened up a sketch plane on the back of the part, and we're going to draw out a line from the bottom of six and a half six point seven five mil because we're doing twelve and a oh, no wait twelve and a half so we're doing six point two five so I can double click on that and change that to six point two five and then we're gonna draw a line up from there which is at 45 degrees, uh, but this measurement's measuring from there, so it'll be 135 degrees, and yeah, we'll make it that long. And then let's X out of that. We can draw a construction line up from this point, like so, and then we can draw a line that isn't a construction down from it at 45 degrees. Those two will meet, and then next thing out, we can go to this trim command and just trim off those end bits, and we've got a nice little, uh, effectively Picatinny-shaped bevel in there for this to run in, and then we can probably, if we're smart about this, do a construct line here, and then another line here and then we can select all of these so I'm holding down control to select all the lines like so and go mirror and it selects those four objects 
and then we can go let's get rid of sketch part go to the mirror line and we can select that that uh, construction line I drew in and go OK and then lo and behold it's made us that shape so uh, that's that's that sorted so we can now take that and we can extrude so I've hit E to bring up the extrude tool and I'm just going to rotate around a bit so this is I'm holding down shift and the middle mouse button to rotate round uh, and I'm just going to pull this back probably halfway so it's 51 mil tool so let's just go 25 mil that so a nice big open hole um, therefore our our part to run in which would be nice so we've now got to design a spring that runs in there and a part that fits and runs in that as well so how are we going to do this it's a good question that I keep asking myself right uh, let's go to this end and create a new sketch um, we're just going to draw a construction line up probably two and a half mil. Now we can start by drawing a rectangle, a centre defined rectangle that isn't a construction and we'll go out yeah like that. And then we're going to uh, draw actually aren't we? No we're not. We are going to use the inspector tool to measure this line here. Oh, sorry, dimension tool. So I'm going to type D to bring up that, and we're going to change that to 12. Yep, and then we're going to dimension this for some reason it's scaled with it so again we're going to change that to five so this is effectively going to be our carriage and what we're going to add on to this is the two teeth that go in here and give us a bit of space to run in so again we're going to um, draw out some lines like so and change the angles to be the 245s I'll do that there and it's cottoned on that I want that at that angle. Excellent. But again, I can click T to bring up my trim tool and trim off that line. Now it looks like it's done some weird cut, but that line there is only part of the uh, angle showing. Oh, dreadfully sorry about that. Um, it's only part of the angle showing uh, measurement there to show that that is at 135 degrees from that. Uh, and we're going to trim this this internal line because we don't need it anymore because this is going to be a single solid part. And we're going to do the same thing over here quickly and hopefully it should catch on that I want it at 45 yep and again from this one 45 I'm just going to go to trim and trim and trim and then trim that and we have now made a lovely little carriage where it's going to run in there And I'm going to be cheeky about how I'm going to extrude this. So I'm going to click on E for extrude. And it's going to say new body. So I'm going to go join. And we're going to go extrude. And we're going to extrude symmetrically. And we're going to make it one centimetre big. So we're going to extrude it five mils each way. And the idea behind that is that that gives us a bit of play so when we draw a spring in that will be at, at full extension and then hopefully it will have at least five mil of travel to go back in a bit which should give us um, which should give us a nice bit of uh, travel and locking tension for our patch not that there's going to be much torque on the patch to come out because it's not like it's hanging a uh, hanging a GoPro off of it because uh, bear in mind this this is a 3d printed sprung loaded part and this hangs a GoPro off the front of my face. Um, well, it used to. I don't use it anymore. Um, and GoPros, 
have have a bit of mass behind them, so there's a there's a fair amount of uh, of torque on that uh, on that kind of uh, 3D printed part there. And uh, right, so AATV's just said uh, it's pretty powerful uh, for free software, um, and yes, it is. It's very very powerful for free software and that's because really it's not free because if you are a company wanting to use it it's very expensive per license and uh, in fact that's the debate we're having at work about whether or not to uh, get a couple of licenses of, of fusion for stuff internally but for hobbyists it's an absolute godsend because you can do so much with it um, and it really lets you let you uh, get your creative juices flowing and allows bedroom hobbyists to design and build stuff and maybe even make some low rate products with it. So right let's crack on. Um, last bit to do on this before we try and design the spring is uh, the tab which I said again and I'll jump back onto here. 12 and a half wide it's going to be slightly smaller on R1 but it shouldn't matter on the width too much um, by two and a half tall by two and a half deep. So let's let's draw that. Um, Jump back over, and we're going to click on that face and draw a new sketch on it. Now, when you when you click on a face and draw a new sketch, sorry, I keep turning this one to the camera here. When you click on a new face and draw a sketch, it will automatically rotate your model to be um, perpendicular. Yeah, perpendicular to your camera view, so you're looking straight onto the uh, the face you're working on. So here we're going to grab a, uh, the rectangle tool, and we're going to draw a rectangle that's 12 mil wide because that's how big our carriage is uh, by two and a half mil tool. Uh, there we go. And then again we're going to grab it and go E for extrude and it automatically turns around to a point where you can actually see your extrusion quite nicely which I, I find really useful. And we're going to extrude it out two and a half. Uh, and don't worry about looking blocky at the moment. I'll go through. So I, I tend to blockily design the product or design the part I'm making and then I'll go through and add contour. Well not contours. I I add my kind of fillets to it to kind of round it out a bit. Uh, but one of the things I keep getting told by by various different people is actually think about what you're contouring and what you're what you're adding fillets to because you might be there going, oh, it looks horrible with this square edge. But in reality, that that fillet you're putting on is only a, a radius of like half a mil, which may look massive on on what part you're designing. But we've got to remember that this this whole part is only this big which isn't that big and so what looks like a massive feature on this is actually really small and it just gets lost when it's 3D printed so you may spend ages trying to add all these little fillets in but it really doesn't actually affect it all that much um, so got that done now let's think about how we're going to do this spring because honestly I haven't thought about that and I'm used to drawing straight lines uh, right well Let's start from here. Oh, we got a spline tool. I think I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to start from here and I'm going to go out at Twenty degrees, probably. So let's go twenty degrees. Let's bring it out. See, let's not lock the angle. Oh, how do I unlock the angle? Escape. There we go. So I'm going to bring it out by. Oh, I think this is in half mil steps, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So let's bring it out by. 5 mil externally and let's make it a mil wide but that's not going to work out a mil wide is it oh I need some trigonometry or do I uh, let's roughly do it Construction, let's make it two mil there. We're going to drag that out. Mm. 
sorry, when I go quiet, it's normally because my brain's trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Um, <laughs> right, so that's an 18.4 degree angle. So, yeah, short 18.4. So we are going to draw a line out here. In fact, I might even be able to be cheeky. No, it didn't mean to finish sketch. So I've clicked out the sketch. So I'm going down to my timeline here and going back in right click edit sketch. Go here and go control. Can I control drag? No, shift drag. No, that's Windows key. Alt drag. No, I can control C, control V though. Yeah, ah, oh, there we go. I'm going to translate that for 2 mil. Sketch. Um, And then, ooh, do we do it the right? <laughs> I've not done this right, have I? No. No, I didn't think about what I'm doing. And it's 25 mil tall, so I want to make these in steps of 2.5 mil. So let's just see the. Which it is. Oh. There's me being stupid. So I'm just going to redo everything I just did. Um, and then I'm going to draw. Oh, I'll come out of that. Edit sketch. I'm going to draw a nice little construction line here. Like so. And then I'm going to click on the mirror tool and I'm going to select that and that. And then we're going to mirror that around that line. Excellent. I'm going to draw another little construction line. And we're going to mirror those. Get that away. And we're going to mirror that around that line. Now I know this looks awful at the moment, but I'm going to just draw in this basically and then I'm going to work on making it actually a feasible spring design um, so hopefully I'll get this done very quickly and then hopefully if I am super sneaky I can go draw a line still a construction line draw it there and then go mirror and then mirror that 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 mirror it around that line boom And hopefully, if I've not drawn this wrong, which is looking like I have, I will. Let's see what we get to with this construction. And go that and that, and then we can. Why have I come out of that again? Hit sketch that and that mirror around that line okay brilliant finish sketch so we'll trim those nope make a line Yeah, of course, that's why. Um, so, I can move that over by another mill, can't I? Right, that's what we're going to do. We're going to revert back through all of this drawing, this beautiful, beautiful drawing that I've done. Thank you. And we're going to re-measure everything because measurements make the world go round. And I'm being an idiot by not measuring. Uh, is anyone actually still watching? Are you all still there or have you got bored of me being an idiot? Because I would be bored of me being an idiot at the moment. That's right, I made 20 mil, 25 mil. Idiot.
So we're going to do this in five mil steps. And we're going to go from here. Not a construction line. We're going to go down by five mil, and we're going to come across. Like so. We're going to exit out of that. We're going to draw a construction line of 2mm. We're going to draw another construction line of 2mm. You know what? I should have done the Blue Peter and practiced this beforehand. <laughs> oh, great. People are still here. Excellent. Um, I hope you are enjoying this uh, um, show. I wouldn't say spectacular show, just just show, and uh, yeah. So that's what our spring width is going to be, and hopefully now, if I go through and mirror these like the cheeky sort of am, uh, mirror, mirror line that one. So okay, and then oh look at that that's speed. See, you figure it out every time you get a little bit faster because you learn all your tricks the last time around. There we go. Spot on. So this is our kind of initial draft at the spring. Um, and now, remember when I said that you want to always join your extrudes because you don't want to have multiple bodies? Well, because I've made this a floating part, it's declared it as a second body, which is something I'm going to have to solve in a minute. But for the time being, we are golden. Um, so I think that's almost ready to extrude. So I'm going to add a line there. Actually, I don't need to add a line. I can select on that and go construction, turn construction off. That's now a solder line, so that's that enclosed. And then I can do the same here. Uh, we can go construction. Select the line. Oh, I'm out of there. That's why. Right. Set the line and turn the construction off. That's now a solid entity. And we can extrude. And it didn't rotate it. <laughs> Typical. After I say it would rotate, it doesn't. Extrude that down by 5 mil. And we can go join. Okay, so that has join. Oh! Oh! Bless. I, I didn't expect Fusion to be that smart, but it has detected that I'm touching both the bodies and has joined them into one body. As you can see over here, we've got kind of different aspects. So it, it's kind of a mix between timeline and tree, actually. So you can turn your bodies on and off. You can, if you want to, view every sketch in your design as well, and that will kind of superimpose over the top. So, so you can see it's showing that sketch that we've just done there on that body, but we don't want that turn that off um, and yes those corners are sharp but that's what I was talking about earlier just so people don't scream at me if they join midway through we're going to fill it all of these points so I've gone up here to the fillet tool and I'm going to select all those edges those horrible sharp edges and we're going to fillet them in by what, a mil and then probably do the same on these internal ones as well Um, and the main reason I'm doing these straight edged ones is not because I think it's a good design, it's not, it's not the best design, but um, I don't want to try messing around with um, curved and spline designs too much at the moment, especially not in this stream. Um, that should be that should have been something I should have looked at before going live. So again, I've, oh, that's why. I've gone to the fillet tool, I'm selecting that edge, um, I'm panning around and selecting all the other edges. Again, I'm holding down control to do multiple edges. Um, and then we can either drag that arrow and manually see it change or we can uh, type in a number. So I'm just going to do a half mil rad there. So it's half the, the rad of the in external rad. That's actually looking kind of like a spring. Oh, I'm amazed by that. Which, uh, which is good. So yeah, that will be a nice sprung loaded, hopefully, uh, catch. Let's bring in, and you know what? 
while we're here, we might as well. Oh, I need to extrude. I want to go to a new sketch plane. Let's rotate it around, which is lovely. Um, let's put in a little tab here just to uh, just to help you grab hold of. So do let's do a two mil. Oh, oh no, sorry, five mil by ten mil. Let's just extrude that up two and a half. So two and a half. And then I will round that off in a minute to make that look nice. So there we go. That that is our MVG plate. And now that we've got this design, really, if I even if I'm going to put the logos and stuff up here, we can put whatever we want on here. So I could try and design a GoPro mount. Uh, you could, if you really wanted to, 3D print an MVG mount for an actual MVG. But I wouldn't want to trust an expensive MVG on a on a, a helmet. Um, Although, if you get given your MVGs for free, um, why not? <laughs> I, uh, I, I joke there, obviously. If you if you are being lent stuff to review, don't put off cheap mounts. Make sure you care for it and don't just trash it. Oh, that's good to know. Yes, Fusion 360 does work across most platforms. Uh, it definitely works on Mac. It definitely works on Windows. Ooh, not sure about Linux, but believe the way Fusion works is if you are connected to the internet they will actually push most of the processing for it up onto the cloud so uh, you can do quite heavy lifting on like machines which means really it's just a front end interface that they need to get working so it might well be on Linux as well because I know quite a lot of people like to use Linux in the industries uh, actually that is a point let's let's have a quick Google um, Where's my Chrome tab? Where is my Chrome tab? Transition. And where's my Chrome tab over here? Why is that not? There we go. Uh, Fusion. Oh, caps off is on. 360 on Linux. Apparently, there is support for. Oh, yeah, no, you're there. Yeah, so apparently there is support for Linux, so I have not tested it personally, um, but it is it's a great bit of software and is definitely available on Windows and Mac, which covers the majority of people, and those who are running on Linux probably do have access to a Windows machine, but they probably wouldn't admit it. <laughs> anyway, uh, back on with the design. So yeah, we've got this working. Um, I'm not sure about that straight edge I might do something about that later um, let's jump on to what we were going to do a while ago oh my god have I been streaming for an hour already yes I have okay let's uh, let's crack on with this so um, jumping back into Chrome quickly this is the reference design oh, sorry. that's the reference design we've got um, Tom quickly shout out in the next 20 seconds or so what number you want next to it and Maybe we can have a, a quick debate on which font to go with. And I swear to God, if anyone suggests uh, Comic Sans, uh, I'll kill the stream straight away. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, I've grabbed this image. Oop. Is that going to keep up? Yeah. I've grabbed this image here, which is a um, just a basic skull outline, because I'm going to have to hand trace the design over to, uh, to Fusion. So... Going to go quickly and uh, save image, and I'll just uh, get that saved. Let's put that in pictures. Let's just go a web pic. Oh, hang on, I'm going to have to find a new skull image because that's a web p, and I don't think Fusion will read a web p image in. I've uh, just found this image, so I'm just gonna. Uh, it's gonna be tiny, isn't it? Oh, it's tiny. That's fine. Let's 
Let's actually call it, call it the right name as well. Not skill, it's a skull. So Tom wants a number one. Does does he have a choice in font? Or can I go wild and pick my own font for it? Um, so. Let's start a new sketch. Um, and it's flipped it around, so I'm going to flip it back so we're working the right way up because this is that's the orientation we're going to have the image in. Um, now, we're going to want to put a recessed rectangle into it. So I'm looking at my uh, reference image on the other screen. Sorry. Uh, ooh, how am I going to do that? Yeah, let's do this. So what I'm going to do is create a rectangle for that top half. Oh, I should have made that construction rectangle. Create a rectangle for that top half, which is a construction one. Luckily, the one is just a rectangle, so it doesn't need a font. Excellent. <laughs> so got that rectangle, and then hopefully that should... Well, let's do so. Oh, I can use it like that. So I'm going to use the rectangle to find the center of this rectangle, like so, and then do that like so. And what say we do? So how tall is that? Twenty-five. So let's make this twenty-five and a half. So let's make it. One mil spacing on the edge, so quick maths oh, 23 and a half, and then how wide is it? I keep it in the caps up, not the tab. Um, where, where is my width feature? Oh, there it is. It's 41, so again, 40, 39, we'll make 39. So we got this lovely little rectangle which we're going to extrude up. You see where I'm going in a minute, but I probably two mil. Look at that. Isn't that nice? So now we're gonna frame that up. So I'm gonna go a new sketch. And again, it's flipped me around. I'm gonna, it's gonna be a lot of this in the next 20 minutes or so. Joy, joy, joy. Um, has my uh, my stream comments recovered? Yes, excellent. Uh, <coughs> brilliant. Turn my phone off, save some battery. So, we're going to divide this rectangle up into two sections. Uh, I jump back over to that one. And then, why is Skype open? So, I'm going to say, looking at this image, we're going to go probably a third of it is going to be this area, and then two thirds of it is going to be the skull and the number one. So, Again, we're going to want one mil around the edge of this. So, again, I'm going to go construct, construct, find the middle. Now, sometimes there are, I think there are like auto find features where it will detect where the middle is, but that's found the crossover point between those. One at the center. Uh, yeah. In fact, I've been an idiot, so I don't want that. What I want to do is construction. How wide is this? Oh yeah, it's on the middle of that line. Middle of that line. This is 39 mil wide. So 39 divided by three, it's 13. It's kind of 13 and long, which is oh useful. So that's 13 there, and then we want a million from each side. You understand the method, the madness in a minute. So we're going to go to the middle of that, which is going to be six and a half. Perfect. Now we can go there to find from centre, and we're going to go middle of that line. Yeah, uh, a million from each side, 13. That's 11 we want. And then that's saying 22 and a half. That's 23 and a half. So we want 21. And a half, and then we're gonna. I've done that in construction, so I can just quickly jump around all of those and then go not construction. And that is going to be our kind of 
patch with all the little cubes in it. Um, and I'm just going to emboss that down by two mil. Sorry, extrude that down again by two mil. So that's going to be that patch. And then let's just make sure. Sorry, I'm going to. Oh, I'm an idiot. Sorry. Jump over. So I've been chatting while the web page has been up, not the, the thing. Anyway, so we had this embossed part, and then I have split it into a third. I've made this section dug out, um, which is going to be the uh, switchback. It's going to be our uh, kind of bumpy bit here. And I apologise all for doing that while not showing you that. That has got to be the most annoying thing ever. I apologise. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's crack on. And now let's do the skull. So I'm going to start a new sketch. I've got to remember how to do this again. Um, flip that round. And then we're going to insert an image. Where is it? Insert from my computer. Go to my pictures. Some... Oh look, here's all the thumbnails I've been making. Why is it not put in there? It's because it's not a recognised file format. Excuse me a minute. How hard is it to get a JPEG? Honestly. Who knows? Uh, what's doing? What's doing in here? Let's go for that one. Is this a JPEG? Probably not. Let's have a quick look on here. Um, can I download? What is it? I think it's going to be a PNG, which is good. Has it downloaded anything? If not, click here. Oh, it's a zip file. That's super useful. Right, um, I'm just going to leave you on this screen for a moment while I unzip all this. Do, do, do. 7 zip. Sweet, I've got a PNG. So hopefully this will read PNGs. Picture, skull outline, way, that, where's it put it? Oh, so it's plane, that plane. Ah, oh, perfect, right, so we're gonna do that. Um, I'm just gonna go back to my reference image. So that skull's looking a bit big compared to that one. So we'll scale that back a second. Um, so how are we going to do scale on this? Ah, oh, scale. Let's set that to 0.75. And preferably do that in both axes, but apparently not today. Let's try. Oh, no, that's going to flip it. Move that about. Oh, that's nice. Right. Let's try that again. Insert from computer. Skull. Put it on that plane. Let's move it by five mil, two and a half mil, and then we're going to set the scale on that to 0.75, and we're going to tab down and set that one to 0.75. That's looking good. Now, because that's placed there, it's placed. It's not. Uh, fitted to it so I'm gonna have to sketch around it effectively and use it as a trace to get a rough skeleton head um, and I'm hoping I can do that <laughs> I think I can just do a spline I'm not particularly the best at freehanding stuff but needs must so let's Try and do this. What? 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 Yeah, that's 
Go around, flop. Flop. Oh, that's not going well. Uh, sorry, Tom, your uh, skull is not going to be the best. And let's just clip that. And then hopefully I can just. We're all back. Okay, that's still there. Oh, that kind of looks skull shaped. Or at least half a skull. So, uh, yeah, let's crack on with that. And uh, let's give it some teeth. I'm going to use straight lines for the teeth, Tom. I'm uh, sorry about that, but I'm just going to be <laughs> brutal. I want, I want to get this done well enough the first time. So uh, let's just draw a construction line down so I know where my midpoint is. Which is there. Yep. Thank you. Let's get that. And then. Oh, you know, a bit racist. Because if I had the teeth all the way down here, maybe I had like four of them. Oh, that'd look cool on kit. I wish. I wonder if anyone's done that before. Haha, -ha, sarcasm. No. Like that there, that there, that there. And then uh, let's give it an eye. So if I hopefully yeah, finish sketch for a second, that's that. Okay, cool. That kind of looks like the skull we're going for. So if we look again on that slide, and I actually have a look on my one. Ah, oh, yeah, a vector file. I can bring in um, I can bring in vector files and work with it. I just don't have any vector files to hand. So that's how I did, um, that's how I, I took, where's my browser, there, that's, oh I've got the panel open, so this, this I can export as a DXF, and I have a DXF for that, and, uh, uh, do I have a mic to hand, I do, over to my table cam. One of, one of the benefits about being one of the uh, guys at work who uh, knows a lot about the laser cutter is I get to help other people learn how to use the laser cutter. Uh, and as a demo, kind of showing them how to use it, I uh, took in a couple of my, uh, my £5 mags. If you haven't watched the video on that, check out the video. These are very good mags for £5-ish. Um, and I laser engrave my logo onto them. Oh, get a bit of light on that. Uh, there you can see my logo engraved. Um, and that was all just from a DXF from my uh, uh, Fusion 360 file. So yeah, uh, DXF's perfect. You can put those in and get a, a decent looking, uh, decent looking image. Uh, this one is obviously just going to be a nice quick one. Um, let's give it some eyes. Let's go back to the sketch. Can I... Oh, finish sketch. Can I put that? Of course not. I'm going to create a... Clips probably going to be about that. Uh, so look, compare it to that one. Uh, a bit too, uh, bit too vertical on that. Let's. Um, Yeah, a bit too vertical, so let's just oh, let's try that again and bring it down a bit. So again, uh, clips. Here we go here. Oh, something just disconnected. Was it this? Possibly. Uh, 
Let's do that. Excellent. And now we're going to do our cheeky mirror move and mirror all of that design. Let's get the sketch pad out of the way. And then we're going to set our mirror line. Boom. And there we have our skull. Uh, let me just jump back over here a second. How are we all finding it, by the way? Uh, everyone happy with what's going on? I'm just <laughs> following, um, judging by the people who've commented, at least one of the viewers has used Fusion, so kind of understands what's going on, which is good. Um, and they haven't called me out on anything, which means I'm probably doing an all right job, hopefully. Um, right, let's just add a nose. It's gonna be a very basic nose. Uh, Yeah, let's go there, and, and we have a nose, and then we're going to extrude that skull down by 2mm, and cut that out. So, let's get rid of the image, uh, suppress, there we go, there's your skull logo. I don't think that's too bad, compared to... Uh, compared to the image I'm working off there. So I think that's not too bad. And then we can just add our number one into it. Which again, uh, let's we just quickly jump into the sketch. So this is one of the things. This is now extruded, but I can still work on this sketch, which is very helpful. So I can uh, go here to the middle point of this line. And draw a construction line at this midpoint and draw along. So that skull is 17mm across, uh, and then the edge of that is let's call it 11mm. So what's half of 11mm? Well, that would be 5.5mm. Uh, oh, cheers to the kind word, guys. Um, yeah, doing it live is is a bit of a is a bit of a yeah uh, step up from normally me sitting in my boxes watching either Forgotten Weapons or uh, AATV um, and designing whatever I want. Um, so doing it live and talking through it is is yeah it's a bit unnerving, but you know I think I'm getting used to it and hopefully I'm not rambling too much. Uh, two mil wide, let's say, and. Uh, Ah, oh, where's my reference? So it's the same height as the skull. Okay, that's not not too bad. I can I can work with that. So I'm gonna yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll go to a rectangle. We're not gonna do an edge to find. We know we're gonna start here, go across two mil, come up, and go dot five. Oh, no, not one dot four. Fourteen dot five. Yeah, that looks about right finished sketch so you can see I've drawn that sketch but it's not showing up um, and it's not extruding so we can either view that final sketch here in our in our tree and then I can click on it and do a separate extrude of minus two mil oh, not star two minus two like that or the other thing I could do is go down to my timeline go to that previous extrude which is the skull go to edit feature and then control click on that box as well, not with control, just click and then I'll add it to that and it'll extrude at the same depth. So that's, uh, that's that done. So there you've got your number one. Um, and you can you can emboss and kind of engrave text uh, text into, into stuff. Um, although there is a kind of weird process of you've got to take the text and then effectively rasterize it, but not rasterize it, you vectorize the text. So I'm trying to think. Yeah, you you take from being a text object to being 
uh, vector object and then you can use that as, as your outline to do your embossing and engraving and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so that's our score on our number one done. Now, let us do this sort of funky pattern going on up here, which is in some of the other views that Tom sent me. In fact, hang on, let me switch back. I'll pull up our highly secretive communication system, which is definitely not Facebook Messenger, um, and uh, show, uh, show off the other bits and pieces. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. Does it get any bigger? Yes, if I zoom in horrendously. Uh, oh, that's horrible. I love it. And that's in the wrong Chrome window, isn't it? It is. Drag that, drop that in that one. Drag that, drop that in that one. There we go. Transition. Boom. Uh, so, here are some of the ones, here's an image that Tom sent me, and you can see that the skull is actually a lot bigger, and, and that, um, and really I should have done that design. Um, I'm an idiot. Uh, but we're going to kind of do a little bit of an inverse, and this is just an example, and Tom, if you want me to do a proper one, let me know, and I'll make you a proper one <laughs> at a later date. Uh, but yeah, we got the one there, we got the skull, and then they've got all these little pips. So this is, ooh, let's reset the zoom quickly on that because that is horrendous. Yes, um, I can do it. One, two, three, four, four by five in two blocks. And so, how are we going to fit that? So we're going to go to the base of that. No, I don't want to screw it. Base of that, and you sketch. And I've got to flip it around for sanity's sake. And I forgot to switch back again. Oh, I'm glad I'm uh, I'm inspiring you to uh, to give it a go. It's it's really not that hard, and 3D printers are not that expensive. But we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a little. I'm going to hit I for inspect, which will give me measurements. So this is 11 mil wide. So if I'm going to divide that into five bits, give it a, that's nine and we'll do a bit. Uh, mental calculations quick. So if I want them one mil wide pips, that's five mil. That gives us six mil to play with. Take a mil off each side. Four mil. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Oh, it's almost, almost. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm more than happy to. If you want to uh, do a proper design for yourself as a trial, um, I am more than happy to give it a trial print and see how it goes, and send it to you. So that. Sounds like a good idea, Tom. Let's do that. Um, but yeah, hang on. So if we make the pips one mil wide, which is quite small actually, um, we can fit four of them in there with a mil spacing between each of them and a mil between each edge. No, five in there. Mil between each edge. Yeah, and that's pretty much perfect. So let's let's do that. So there, we're in the sketch. Brilliant. Let's do a rectangle of. Select, sorry, rectangle, sketch palette, construction. Go to this corner, snapping, and do one by one. Boom. And now we're going to do a rectangle from that tippy top corner of that. We're going to turn construction off, and we're going to do one by one. And then we're going to have to repeat that over and over again loads of times. Or we could be cheeky and select that square and then go to uh, rectangular pattern excellent i'm gonna go we're gonna go extend spacing i'm gonna go quantity oh yes we're gonna go five in that direction and in that direction and we're going to go four in that direction and then we're going to go a distance of two mil and a distance of two mil oh that's almost too perfect look at that 
isn't that impressive. Um, and now I've realised what I've done. <laughs> um, and then we're going to... Yeah. Okay, so this isn't going to be the most amazing design ever. Let's do that. Do that. And then we're going to go to select. And we're going to select all of those. And then we're going to go to mirror. Around that line. And go OK. Excellent. And now we're going to go extrude. And we're going to slow. Oh, hopefully I can just go select and extrude by 2 mil and there we have all our pips and that is going to be a fun little thing for the 3d printer to print but it's a nice little challenge um, and then maybe just to make it look a bit nicer <laughs> very true as soon as you get hooked and you see your first little print turn up there are there is always that urge to buy your own, and um, I mean, I did. That mine's sitting just over there, and I might, I might, I'll try and show it on camera in a bit. But yeah, if you don't want to buy a printer, that's also okay because if you want to start designing your own stuff, there are. I will actually do this properly on the webcam. Um, there are websites out there and organisations out there that you can upload your files to and get it professionally printed in. Well, either on th printers like the ones that I have, or uh, or on industrial grade style printers, which use uh, all sorts of funky methods from photolithography of basically shining light through resin to get it to set and become hard to SOS, which is selective laser sintering, which is really really cool because they use high power lasers to um, fuse materials together. And when I say materials, I'm not just talking about plastics they can do metal and titan well, titanium is metal but like they can do metal parts on these uh these um systems and in fact uh, this is complete tangent uh parts on the f-35 are metal sintered pr printed parts which just blows my mind um and i oh sorry about that i even believe the space station now has 3d printers on it although i'm not sure what type because I wouldn't want to have that in the space station because it kind of relies on gravity a bit. But hey ho. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get back on with this. Um, I think we're getting pretty close on that. That's starting to look actually really quite nice. Um, and this is one of my faster designs at an hour and a half. So let's uh, let's go there and create another sketch. And uh, again, we're just going to rotate it around. I'm just going to wind that midpoint, which is there. Uh, how wide, how far apart are these? So we're going to do I, we're going to measure that length there, to that length there. Five and a half mil apart, so let's make a four mil bar. So there's the midpoint, and I'm just going to do a line that is construction based. Um, by the way, if you're using a keyboard and you click on the line, you can hit X to toggle construction on and off before you start drawing. As soon as you start drawing, X won't work anymore. But yeah, I'm going to draw a line of 2 mil down from there. And then let's turn construction off. And we're going to do a 4 mil by 11 mil bar. And we're just going to extrude that up by 2 mil. And there is our little mount with pips. Ooh, SLS injection mold for short run plastic. So you had SLS printed mold to then inject plastic into. That's quite cool. I like that. That's quite a cool idea. Um, and if, well, that brings me on to something else. There are other companies out there that will happily take designs and for many, many monies, CNC manufacture it. So as opposed to 3D print, it will be... Uh, put on to like five axis milling machines and milled out of a solid block of whatever um, although those are very expensive for one-offs so I, I, I had a look at getting there uh, getting, uh, let's go back to webcam mode actually we can probably do this from table cam yep so I had a look at getting this made in, as a one-off in metal um, 
and it was like upwards of a grand for this whereas this is uh, MJF printed which is a slightly different technology similar to SLS um, again me nerding out for a minute here uh, MJF is kind of like a cross between your standard inkjet printer and an SLS printer so it works in the same principle as it starts off with powdered nylon which is what this is made out of and then it goes over with a inkjet print head and prints an ink onto it where it needs to fuse and that's basically your fusing agent and then goes back over with a heat element and that ink then causes the particles around it to fuse uh, which gives it a very rapid production time um, and this one-off uh, produced was produced uh, in about a week turnaround time actually was it two weeks it might have been two weeks turnaround time but that that was mainly getting it into the queue and waiting for the prints to be free um, and cost me about 100 quid for that which is not bad and um, the mount that actually attaches to is SLS and I think I do have some SLS parts about somewhere else but that's a discussion for another time uh, but yeah 3D printing is so much cheaper than getting uh, anything manufactured uh, on a CNC machine and is a lot less wasteful because you only use the material you need as opposed to starting off with a lot of material and removing it. Um, what I'm just going to quickly do actually before I have any major issues. Oh, what happened there? Oh, no. There's that one that does. Oh, dear. That can be fixed. Sorry, I hit Control S to save my file, but what it actually did was reset the scale on my desk cam. Um, over here, I'm going to save the file and just call it. Uh, let's just put it into Airsoft, not Elite Five. Yeah, and call it uh, demo. So we're getting pretty close now. Uh, anyone else? Anything? Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is just add some fillets to make everything a bit nicer. Uh, so the first obvious ones are going to be here we're just going to fill these edges down so they're just a bit more easy on the fingers um i would fill at that edge but it's probably not going to work let's try oh it does oh, that's good okay so can yep yeah. and we're just going to fill that out just give it a bit more strength yeah, probably the same. No, that's the locking surface. Uh, we'll probably put a fill on these. Again, this is me going. Oh, it needs to have a fillet because it looks nice. But that's too much, and that isn't isn't going to be noticed in the print because we're going to print this at a point two mil layer height. So that's two and a half layers that will be doing that round. So you're barely going to notice it. So I'm I'm just not going to bother with that. Um, Although I will bother with uh, these edges, put those in, and again, um, th this is looking quite quick because I'm using keyboard shortcut, which is F to fill it, um, and I'm going to do the same probably here, up here, and here, and oh, I'm going to have to move around for that. There. And probably push those in by yeah go for two and a half mil around and we'll do the same on the top not that I don't like sharp edge no, not, not that sharp edges are a bad thing it's just nice to put around on it so it's less likely to injure anyone because <laughs> uh, you can get quite sharp edges on uh, 3d printed parts where is going that one? Oh, gonna have to move that and then move it around that. Go fill it and fill it. Turn that. Up. That's a bit much. So we'll come back to no. Yeah, that'll do. And then this locking tab up here. We will do some fillets there as well. There we go, that's that sorted. Right, 
uh, hopefully that should be good and hopefully this 45 degree angle should print quite nicely um, so obviously printers especially the type of printer I use um, have kind of overhang limits because it has to build up and it needs that support underneath to be able to put material on the layer it's printing but 45 degrees should be fine for a 3d printer which is nice um, I think that is looking pretty much close to being able to print uh, is there anything wrong can I think of any issues with it let's have a quick look I'm just going to compare it to my um, tabletop cam compare it to this part so they've added some chamfers on the bottom here I'm assuming that is to do with fitting in against that hmm. I actually don't know unless my design is completely wrong but there's only one way to find out I guess sorry I did that all off camera again um, so we've got these two chamfers and that Think. I think we should be fine without them. Let's, uh, you know what, actually, I'm going to go to this fillet here, which is that one. Go to edit, and I'm just going to deselect one of the edges. Four edges. We go that one, that one, and that one, and do it by two and a half. I'm going to go fill that one by just and the reason I'm, I'm changing that. Oh, I've done that on the wrong camera again. Um, so I've just changed the fillet here on the, the toggle button, and that's just to make it a bit easier to grip that surface to pull it back uh, to. To release and hopefully there should be enough play in that spring there to do it and again I'm just going to save it and if any of you have used git before or or version control software similar to git uh, this is this is what this is doing so uh, I'm going to save this as um, initial design Brackets ready to print. Um, and I think we're pretty much there. Unless any of you can think of any reasons why I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here for uh, the next twenty seconds uh, and just wait and see if either of you shout out and go no no quick you you've forgotten something. Let's start the countdown. Well, it appears that my uh, stream is lagging behind further than I thought, so uh, it's just waiting for me to start bopping my head to the awesome rendition of Countdown theme. Oh, there we go. No, you're both holding your piece, all three of you. Oh, hang on, am I one of the three viewers? Oh, all two of you. Um, yeah, okay, brilliant, right. So, let's talk about actually 3D printing it. Uh, so, we need to get this file over, or this design over into Cura, which is the slicer. Um, and the easiest way to do that is go to Tools at the top here and go to Make. Ah, there we go. Send it to print. Excellent. I'm going to go to Make. And you can either output and select your body, which is this. This is our one body. And go OK. And then we'll go to my Projects. Go to Airsoft. Here's all my various different things. And oh, I don't have at the moment is... Uh, let's just call it CAD and um, we'll go 
2000 AD patch. And then we'll go MV, we'll call it MVG patch. You could save this as an STL file. And this is the way I'm going to do it because of the way OBS is set up. I need to, to, to have had Cura open already. Um, but you can also just go to make, send to 3D print utility, and then select Cura or custom point it to Cura. So here, select your body and hit OK. And then it will, in fact, I might even do it on the screen. No, it's doing it on the screen. It will open Cura automatically. And all oh my, my computer is trying to take off. Um, oh, there we go. We've opened it in Cura. So here is here is the part, and weirdly it said, oh, we should print it in this orientation. Um, now I've already set Cura up for my printer. That's that's a different kind of topic to cover. But Cura is a free bit of software, and in fact, if I jump over to my Chrome view, uh, it is made by wrong one. Uh, it is made by Ultimaker, who make 3D printers. This is their 3D printer. Well, they have several of them, but it's a free bit of software again, and you can set it up for a whole variety of printers. Um, so this one is set up for my Ender 3, and in fact, they've done the lovely thing of even putting the Ender 3 logo that is on my print bed on their virtual print bed here. As you can see. Um, now, this isn't the orientation I want to print it in. I'm going to rotate it manually, so you've got your controls down here. Um, I've gone to rotate, and I'm just going to rotate it so it's flat on the bed this way. And we can see what details it's brought through for our logos. Right there. Now, you know what? I might actually print this because we can have a little chat while it's printing, hopefully. So I'm just going to turn my printer on to get it warming up. And hopefully you shall now start to hear a lovely, horrible whine coming from the corner. That is normal. Uh, and just going to set that to warm the bed while we uh, we chat slices. So yeah, here we can see the rendering of the part. I'm just going to move this out of the way, um, and we can see it on my bed. So the bed for my 3D printer is. 235 by 235 and the vertical height print through is 250 mil so it's actually a fairly sizable thing and I could I could print the entire A3 rail in there if the print didn't fail but that was not down to the printer that was down to the material I was using and not having the right settings for it but that's good to go pretty much um, now I've chosen this print orientation because it is actually kind of the most sensible one but also it's the right orientation to print this spring in because we're working in layers, effectively the way the 3D printer that I'm using works is kind of like piping icing onto a cake. I'm trying to think of any other description for it. But effectively you've got a long string that you're laying out to make your part. Um, and then it works on one layer and then moves up and works on one layer and moves up and works on the next layer. And obviously your weak point in your design is going to be the joins between the layers. Uh, and in fact, I've been caught out a couple of times early on in my 3D printing career with layer joins. Um, try and think. Have I got examples? Try to deep into uh, into my uh, archives here. Aha! Here are some projects that have laid dormant for a while. Uh, let's chuck them on my table cam. Uh, let's move my hot chocolate out of there. So these were attempts at trying to make um, a electro pneumatic print piston. Um, so instead of using gears and a motor, you use coils and some magnets. So effectively, the only moving part is the piston, which is piston head and some magnets. Um, 
this is one of the first things I actually printed on, on here and you can see that these ones here were printed vertically like this so if this was the print bed they were printed in this orientation which meant they were very weak in the layer joints and that's why that one seems to be half as long because it snapped oh, I bet you it's not going to do it now no it's not because it's been like two years that's actually pretty strong now but yeah it snapped along that layer and that's and that's why in these later iterations I added bevels into them to try and make them nicer and then eventually I just decided that I'd print them vertically like that because um, they seem to work and those were a lot stronger so you've got to worry about what orientation you're going to print in to get a good print result so uh, uh, that one well, that is why we want to print in this direction because our spring is going to be going under compression in this direction uh, and if we were to print in say this orientation you'd have very weak layer lines and in fact if I go to slice preview you can see what the layer lines would look like uh, there so you can see that you'd only have a couple of layers taking all of that tension through and it just snap at that point which is why we would want to print in this orientation oh yeah so so XYZ printers, Cartesian printers is, is what I use um, sorry is that is that Arrow? Arrow Airsoft? Is that how it's pronounced? Is it A-A-R-O? Arrow. Arrow, sorry. I'm sorry if I've absolutely butchered your name there. But yeah, XYZ printers, that's what I've got. I've got a Creality Ender 3, in fact. Let me pull up Chrome again and I'll show you. I've got, got it prepared here. So, uh, where's my tabs? That's the one. The Creality Ender 3, it is a lovely XYZ printer, um, cheapest chips, I say cheapest chips, uh, this one now goes for about £220, I think I picked it up for about 160 when I got it, but it was quite new, so there were, basically the way Creality works is they're a Chinese company and they basically use the first buyers of any product as their dev test team, and then they'll make continual improvements on it. Uh, so the later on in the cycle you buy the, the better quality of the printer but these these are by the time i bought them they were still very cheap but were considered to be the best entry printers and they still are they are bloody brilliant for what they are um i have run this continually well not continually but i've been using it now for two years and it's still pretty much stock uh in fact it is stock and i know the guys who do um who do the attack sense targets so I'm sure Neil will probably watch this at some point um, they use a whole bunch of Creality printers with admittedly with their custom they, they put new firmware on which I should do because this one doesn't have thermal runaway protection uh, yeah um, they, they have a whole load of these but they, they've done a couple of mods to that they use to churn out their parts for the attack sense targets and uh, those are great great bits of kit um, I'm sure Tom will, will swear by those because I believe he has a set in fact, I know he has a set. Um, they are great little printers um, and perfect for, for bedroom printing. And, I mean, 200 quid. You're basically talking about you know, your bottom tier to mid tier, entry to mid airsoft gun. So instead of buying another airsoft gun, you could just go and buy a uh, a single, or a 3D printer. And in fact, I mean, 250 quid for the N3 Pro, which I'd recommend that extra bit. It's slightly better for Z height accuracy and uh, has a couple of other nice creature comforts. And I think it, that one does actually have thermal runaway protection. Um, so 250 quid we're talking about for a decent pr printer. And there's not much in the way of setup. It's about an hour or so to build it. And by build it, it's put the tool bit on the bottom bit, which is already assembled. So it's not much. They're, they are good printers. But, right, we got sidetracked again. Hopefully that answered your question. There wasn't a question, was there? It was kind of a statement. <laughs> oh dear, Tom, have you, have you ordered one already? What's coming next week? Um, yeah, I would 
recommend if you've got you've got the cash line. Well, not cash line, but if you if you are interested in doing this and have some money about, or are willing to save up, definitely get a three D printer. And the realities are pretty good so long as you've got some form of technical knowledge and you're able to problem solve if you need to. They are pretty good for what they are, and there are tons and tons of guides on, out, out there on how to use them. But that's getting away from it. Here is the part, I've laid it down, and it's saying it's going to be ooh, an hour to print. So I'm probably not going to live stream the print, because it's a bit longer than I thought. But I'll run you through some of the settings and how settings work. Um, so for the, so my standard is to use two mil, uh, a 0.2 mil layer height, um, which is a decent enough quality. You can you can see the sort of quality it gives uh, on those parts I was showing earlier. Uh, they're not it's not a bad quality. They're pretty pretty strong. But obviously, if you want fine detail, you go smaller. Although, don't think the Ender three can go much smaller than 0.2 mil Z accuracy. Um, now this has got support turned on. So if we have a little look. Uh, oh wait, mouse button. If we have a little look in that 45 degree arc. It's put supports in there to try and support that 45 degree, and that's because the support angle is set to 45 degrees. But I've done tests before and know that it can probably go to 60 degrees. Uh, so that's uh, that's hiding it again, isn't it? Yeah, let's slice that again. That's cut down a bit, so there's no support in there now. So this is going to be a completely one print, no support design, which is good. Um, and you can see here, these are these are the springs, and you can see it's going to be made up of two layers or two two runs of uh, of the nozzle plus an internal one mil run. Um, and then this is the infill pattern that we've gone for. So I, this is called cubic subdivisions, one I like to use because it, it alternates in all the axes. So you don't get you don't get uh, straight vertical lines or straight horizontal lines, which I find gives good strength. So you can see it is it is changing in all the axes because it's kind of offset like that. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. The the end of three is the best. Um, most cost-effective printer you can get. I mean, it's so what, 250 pounds out of the gate, starting up fees. Uh, you then you're paying about 20 quid a reel for a kilogram of plastic. So that that kind of gauges how much uh, how much material you go, uh, how much you can print out of that because you could print a kilogram object with one reel. So it's 20 quid for that. Um, and in my time of printing, so I've been printing over a year and a half now. I have used one full reel of PLA, um, a, some of PETG, and probably a quarter of a reel of TPU. Um, and the, so TPU is kind of like a flexible material. Um, in fact, I have some here. So this one's PLA. Uh, you can see it's got, oh, hang on, let's do it on the, the decent cam. So this one's PLA, you can see it's fairly strong, but PLA is made out of effectively sugar, so it's not the best in terms of hard wearing in the weather. TPU is much more flexible, so I can flex and bend those down, uh, but will be more rigid depending on your infill ratios. So at the moment I've been prototyping my uh, nubs for my custom hop up in TPU, um, I need to find a better way of getting them made. Oxidally, and then pet G is the same sort of materials that your that like milk bottles are made out of, um, and is a much more hard wearing material than T than PLA, and it's supposedly as easy to print as PLA. Although I've not found that yet, I still need to optimize my printer settings for it. So I need to do some more experimentation with that. Though we have been using pet G in work, and it seems to be working quite nicely. Um, so yeah, there are, there's a whole wide range of materials, but yes, it is 250 quid for the printer. The software is free, and then it's basically 20 quid a reel, and a reel will last you a while. So it's it's not bad. It's not bad at all, um, and I highly recommend it. Anyway, that's another tangent. So yes, um, where are we? Infill. So you've got your cubic subdivision. This is set to about 40% infill. 
we can actually get away with 20% infill. Obviously, the more infill you have, as I sort of show, where is my infill? There it is. So if I was to set this to 100%, no, 100%, this would print a solid part, which you don't need. So each layer is a solid part, effectively. So each layer is full, um, which would take a lot longer. Whereas we're going to print with a 20% infill, it makes the part lighter, but it doesn't really, if, well, it obviously will affect your the structural integrity of the part, but uh, with the kind of the cubic subdivision patterning, or any of the infill patternings, it will give it more rigidity than it otherwise would if it was just hollow. Um, and it also means you're more uh, efficient use of your plastic, really. So that is pretty much ready to go. So, and in fact, oh, that's fancy. We can we can see it build the layer and how it's going to move around and fill in the layer there. Um, but yeah, uh, I won't bore you with that. And then effectively, all it is is you save to file. Um, we find our memory stick, which should be plugged in, hopefully. So the way I transfer is I've got an SD card that mounts into the uh, 3D printer. So I upload to the 3D printer, which is not detecting at the moment. Um, or I upload to the memory card, the memory card goes in the 3D printer, and then from there um, you can then find the file in the 3D printer and send it to print. Uh, there we go, there's the SD card. So I've got it all divided into folders in here. Um, so we're going to go new folder and we're going to call this one uh, 2000 OD. And then we're going to call this um, NVG patch. And I'm going to put V1 at the start. So when I'm scrolling through on my screen, and if I've got multiple versions of it, I can see which version I want. Um, and then we'll go save that. And it is saved. And that's it. We are we are ready to go. So. I'm going to go over here and eject my card. That's that ejected. And then, oh, this is going to be awful to watch. I'm going to pick you up and hopefully I'll be able to bring you around to, yes, the office is a state. That's the 3D printer down there. Um, there's my reel, there's all my crap, and the SD card goes in around here, so I'll just put that in. And then on the screen here, so we, we've basically got, oh, let's see if I can, oh my clamp is going to come in useful. Let's clamp here in place. I apologise. Oh, I really apologise if you hit the camera. This is not going well. So, and let's turn the mic so I can actually still be heard. Uh, there we go. So, all the interface is done with this knob, which is a twist knob and a push knob. So, we can push in and go to change SD card, and then it should have detected that we've put the SD card in. And now we can go print from SD. And we can go to 2000 AD. Uh, one of the things I forgot to talk about, uh, which I'll talk about in a second, is temperatures. But yeah, we then find the V1 MVG patch, and we click on it, and away it goes. So it's going to start heating up the nozzle and heating up the bed. So I've already set the hot nozzle to heat up, so that's at temperature. It's now warming up the bed to about 60 degrees, um, and the nozzle is currently at 185. But, oh, hopefully you can see that. But it will warm up to 200 degrees for this and then I'm just going to double check the bed's clear, it's not. You you get a scraper <laughs> with your printer so I'm just going to quickly scrape off the residue that's in the print, printer.
and hopefully that should be good to go. So we've got to wait for that to warm up. While that's happening, um, oh, what am I going to talk to? Oh, this is going to be dodgy. Yeah, this is going to be dodgy. Um, Oh wow, that is not dodgy. Um, ah, funny, right, so I should look quite nice now because I'm on my cook camera. Uh, the 3D printer is warming up, the design is done. Um, it's really just a kind of waiting now. So, any questions from you guys at the moment? Uh, any, any comments, any thoughts, anything you want to know? Or do you think that's kind of covered the basics of how I uh, how I prototype? And now I'm going to sit here awkwardly while I wait for someone to type back. Hopefully. Um, our temperatures doing. Oh, we're almost ready to print. So let's transition back and away it goes. I apologise for that uh, awful camera move. I'm just watching it back on the live stream. Oh, well. Oh, that's a good question. How long have I been prototyping for? Well, um, really, I started in, in earnest when I uh, when I got a 3D printer, which would have been September 2018. Oh, that's not a good sound. Oh, this seems to fix itself. Um, September 2018. Oh, hang on. Let's jump back. Uh, while I talk, I'll leave that on. Um, uh, yeah, so um, so I uh, I picked this up in 2018 and then started in there and it's designing and, and building bits. Although, uh, when I, that was basically when I moved from uni to work. So I've been out of uni two years now. But while I was at uni, when I got the spare chance I, and I had something I needed to make, I would design and make it and kind of sneak in and print it on our uni 3D printers. Um, usually I had to disguise it as other project work. So uh, there's a whole load of parts down here that, uh, that I'm 3D printed while I was at uni for, for a uni project. But while I had these printing, I've also... Uh, 3D printing um, other bits and pieces like light camera mounts so uh, yeah so I've only really been running the channel for just coming up a year at the moment uh, but I've not made strapping cameras to my guns since I started playing really and that was way back in 2015 and I've been needing parts for that since well 2015 so I've been doing the odd bit and piece since 2015 uh, but really in earnest since 2018 and I, f I found like I can design much better now than I could back then because I've learned from the mistakes that I made back then um, and it is just a case of every time you do something you'll just figure out another way to do it slightly better and slightly better and make it slightly easier um, is that actually putting any plastic down? apparently not The uh, the print. Uh, I'll jump back. 
yeah, the printer's been out of commission for a while. Well, not out of commission, just not in use uh, for a while because I've been busy and rejigging stuff. So I think I need to go through and re-level the bed properly because it's having issues and I, like an idiot, didn't test it before the live stream. But um, yeah, so I'm going to go away in a minute and I will re-level the bed and I'll probably reprint this tomorrow at some point. Um, and I'll probably make a post either yeah, I'll probably make a post on Facebook showing off the result of the uh, 3D print. But yeah, that's basically what's happening. The uh, uh, the material is is it too low or too high? No, the nozzle's slightly too high, so the material isn't sticking to the bed and is in fact looping back up and just getting pulled up on the nozzle. So I'm going to cancel this print. <laughs> Which is a shame. What did that actually get printed? Not much. Uh, yeah, part of the reason behind that is the bed's quite old and I probably need to change the bed over. But that's uh, that's not too bad to do. And yeah, Tom, you're probably not wrong there with uh, every printer in the UK is currently being used to print masks. Because uh, yeah, I've heard first hand from nurses and doctors that most of the PPE they're getting is not up to snuff uh, and the Prusa, the Prusa mask is quite a good idea um, in fact if I get my printer working I might try and print a couple if I can find um, if I can find some clear material to make the uh, face shield out of but yeah um, I guess that kind of finishes up this live stream that I've been going for a whole two hours ten minutes I thought this was going to take an hour hour and a half tops um, Hopefully you guys have found it interesting and if you guys, if this gets put up in VOD, I hope it gets put up in VOD, um, um, uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and if you're watching it post live I hope you find it useful. Um, that's me done for the night I think. I will uh, hopefully see you guys all soon and uh, let me know if you enjoyed the live stream and if I should do some more because um, I can probably do some more on some other topics but until then i will see you guys in the next one adios